welcome to the McCall Center Mini Art Lab. My name is Anna Dean. I'm a former artist in residence here at the McCall Center. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about symmetry. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my work and how I incorporate symmetry into my work. Um, sometimes I use technology and other times it's important for me to feel my own hand in the work. So we're gonna do two different iterations of this project today. I'm going to show you how I would use Photoshop to create a symmetrical image. And then we're gonna do a more hands-on activity that you can do at home, just using any simple materials that you probably already have um, laying around at home. So um, let's just jump right in and get started. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about some of my work. Um, this is a piece I did a couple of years ago and the actual dimensions, it's four feet tall by 10 feet wide by about six inches deep. And there are two main things that are happening here. There's this image that's on the right hand side. Um, and then I have another kind of image that's on the left hand side. Um, so the image on the right hand side was from a performance that I did. Um, I created this giant fly head and then I actually danced like a fly. Um, and I took, I mean, it was for a film. So I made a video of that. And then I took photos of myself dancing like a fly. And I was able to use Photoshop to overlay those images on top of each other. And when I made them symmetrical, it created all these really interesting surprise shapes. Um, but it also enabled me to give myself multiple arms, just like a fly has multiple uh, appendages. Um, and so I, after I printed this Photoshop image on a large format printer, I then cut it apart using sort of a little bit of one point perspective, um, which is a system that humans use to understand um, architecture. So it's a system that man made to understand a man-made system, basically. Um, and that was important because a lot of my work is about chaos and order and um, in the man-made and natural world. So this is one example of kind of a human performance, but a computer iteration of that. Um, and I broke down, I, I printed it multiple copies and then broke it down and cut the the image apart and stacked it to create this sort of uh, layered collage. The image that you see on the left hand side actually started as a scribble. So this part up at the top um, was created. I closed my eyes and I made a scribble mark with a marker and then I traced it. I scanned it on my computer and I traced it in Adobe Illustrator. Once I did that, I flipped the image and made it symmetrical. Um, and then I used a CNC router to bring it to existence, to, to carve it out of a piece of wood. And so sort of the idea here is um, my thesis research was about chaos and order. And I learned during my research that human beings find order within symmetry. You can have the most scribbly random mark and when it becomes symmetrical, humans begin to identify with, with that. Um, they see, begin to see things that they can recognize. So a lot of people say, oh, it looks like a butterfly or, oh, it looks like a face. Um, and the reason for that is because our own bodies have symmetry. You know, we have one eye on each side of our face. We have one arm on each side of our body. Um, and so symmetry, when we see something symmetrical, we can identify with it. So. This, I use this piece as an example because this sort of sums up what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to take an image and flip it in Photoshop and make it symmetrical. And then I'm going to show you how you can use your own handmade mark and make a scribble and flip it so that it becomes symmetrical too. Um, so I thought you guys might be a little curious to see what I'm working with now. Um, my work investigates order and chaos and it often involves things that I can control and things that I cannot control. Okay, so I thought that you may be curious to see kind of what I'm working with now. Um, a lot of my work investigates things that I can control and things that I cannot control. Um, so I took ink and poured it into water, dripped it onto water. 
and then I videotaped that. And so what you're looking at here is like a kind of a work in progress that I'm, I'm editing now. Um, and this is ink falling through water. And I'm using a program called Premiere Pro, which allows me to flip the video footage and make it symmetrical. So what happens is it creates all these really interesting shapes as the densities of ink sort of overlap. Um, so these are all just different ways that I'm investigating the same ideas about um, symmetry in my work. So what we're gonna do today is first of all, I'm going to show you how I use Photoshop to combine images and make them symmetrical. So this is a picture that I took. Um, I'm also a high school art teacher and I teach photography class. And so this was a picture that I took just walking around campus. And I've already edited it a bit. I changed some of the colors and bumped the contrast up a bit. Um, and so here you can see that I've taken the same photo and I repeated it and inverted it, flipped it vertically. And what, I'm, what excites me about this process is you get all these like interesting shapes that you were not expecting. See this like negative space that's happening right here between these two um, sets of stairs. And all of these collisions and juxtapositions are really, really exciting. Um, this is another kind of iteration of that where I've taken those two photos and laid them on top of each other and I have adjusted the opacity a bit in Photoshop. Um, and again, it creates these, these densities, um, which are really, really interesting. So I'm gonna go through and just show you real quickly how I would do that using my computer. And then I'm gonna do the same thing and we will um, learn how to do one in a more hands-on process. So this image that you're looking at here is a picture of jellyfish that I took while I was in an aquarium somewhere. I don't even remember exactly where I was. My son is really into fish. So we go to visit a lot of aquariums. Um, so I'm gonna, I wanna take this picture and I wanna put it side by side with another copy of itself. So I need to know what size it is. So if I come over and look at image size, it's telling me that it's eight inches wide by 12 inches tall. So if I create a new file, I go file new, and I'm gonna double the width. So I want it to be 16 inches wide by eight inches tall. I'm sorry, I think that was 12 inches tall. And I do create. So now I go back to my original image. I select all, edit, copy. I go to my new file, edit, paste. And there is my file. So I'm just going to slide it over to one side and I'm going to do the same thing again, paste it again. And this time I'm going to invert it. So I'm going to go to edit. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to image. Edit, transform, uh, flip horizontal. Always takes me a minute to remember how to do that. <laughs> so then I slide it over and you can see when I put those two jellyfish together, look at these really interesting shapes that start to happen. It almost kind of looks like this weird alien face with this weird beard down here at the bottom. Um, it's just really exciting to me to, to see how these shapes evolve. So now that we have all of these really cool surprise shapes, if I wanted to, I could take this image and I could copy and paste it into another document and flip it vertically so that I would have four of these images. Um, but I know some of you are itching to actually start making your own art. So, so now I'm gonna show you how you can use a simple piece of copy paper, just like this, um, and a pencil. And you're gonna do the same thing I just did in Photoshop. You're just gonna do sort of a low tech version. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make this regular piece of eight and a half by 11 copy paper into a square. 
Um, and so the easiest way to do that is if we fold one corner over like this on the diagonal. If you've ever made origami, you've probably done this before. So I just folded this into a triangle. And now I have a triangle and then I have this sort of extra strip over here on the side. So I'm just gonna, oops, trace the edge of that and then I'm gonna cut along this line with my scissors. So that's a really quick, easy way to make an eight and a half by 11 square piece of paper. Um, if you have already cut square paper and it's maybe not this size, that's okay, that works too. Any square piece of paper will be great. Okay, so now we're gonna open this back up and I have sort of a diamond shape, right? With a vertical fold right down the center. So I'm just gonna turn it and fold it in the opposite direction. So now this is folded into fourths, right? So I have four little triangles and I'm gonna collapse this piece of paper so that I'm only looking at one of these triangles, one fourth of my paper. And I kind of like to play around with the idea that I'm controlling some of my art making process, but other part is out of my control. And so I'm gonna, I don't wanna cheat. I don't wanna look at this. I'm gonna close my eyes when I make this mark. So I'm just kind of putting a little bit of tape on this piece of paper to hold it still so that if I don't look at it, um, it's not gonna wiggle around on me. So I'm just taking a regular pencil and I'm gonna close my eyes and I'm gonna make a scribbly mark. If my mark runs off the paper, that's okay. Cause it's supposed to be kind of chaotic, right? It's supposed to be out of my control. So I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm just gonna close my eyes and make a nice scribbly mark. Um, and now I open my eyes and I'm really happy with how that looks. So I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna trace over these lines and make them really bold. Um, so that you can see them really well. If you happen to have a drawing pencil, um, you may have a pack of drawing pencils at home and they have numbers on them like 2B, 4B, 6B, HB. Um, the higher the number, like this one says 6B, that means the graphite is really, really soft. So it's gonna make a nice black thick line. So I'm just gonna take this nice 6B pencil and I'm gonna trace over my scribble line and make it nice and bold and dark. And I'm tracing over it with my 6B pencil. If you don't have a 6B pencil at home, that's okay too. You can use a number two pencil like you used to bubble in your tests. Um, you just may have to, oops, press a little bit harder. My pencil broke, so that shows that I was really pressing down hard. I'm just tracing my shape, making it nice and bold. Oh, and I just broke my pencil, but luckily I brought another one just in case. Trace over it. Okay, so now I can untape all of this tape and I'm gonna open my paper up. So now I'm gonna take to make sure this drawing that I did is now facing a blank side. I'm going to fold it in on itself like so and I have a popsicle stick here. Um, the popsicle stick is just going to be used to help me press down and scratch on my paper. So I'm just going to scratch, scratch, scratch all over my paper and what happens is that extra graphite in my pencil is going to rub off on the blank paper. So it's kind of like homemade carbon paper. I know probably most of you guys aren't even old enough to know what carbon paper is, but it's a really cool way to transfer um, marks. So if you see now, when I open it up, look what happened. It did the same thing that we did in Photoshop, right? Just low tech. So now I can trace over these lines and make them dark so they match my oh my gosh I'm breaking pencils left and right over here here we go um, so I trace over these lines and make them nice and dark and bold and look at that look at all those cool shapes isn't that exciting already it's kind of like when you've if you've ever cut a paper snowflake at Christmas time and you don't exactly know what you're going to get and then you open it up and there's this wow moment 
Um, that's what I really like about this project. It's kind of foolproof. No matter what you do, it's going to turn out really cool. Okay, so now we got to do it one last time. So we're going to take these two drawings on this side, we're going to fold them over, they touch blank white side, and we're going to scratch, scratch, scratch. And I don't really think it matters a whole lot if you scratch on the back of the blank page or if you scratch on the back of the, the pencil drawn page. I don't think it really matters. You can do whichever one. Sometimes you may not be sure that you're drawing really transferred all the way over. Um, so it's okay if you like open it up and kind of peek. And if you see that you can't really see a certain area or a certain line, just fold it back over and scratch it again. The big thing is just to hold your paper flat while you're scratching so that it doesn't wiggle and your lines don't get all blurry and shifted. Okay, so now we open it up. Oh, look at that, so cool, right? So now we're gonna do the same thing again. Trace over our shapes. So once we finish this thing, you guys have endless possibilities for how you can finish your design. I'm gonna show you a few options, but you might get really creative and you might come up with another option that I haven't even thought of yet. tracing over all these lines. And isn't that cool how we took a random scribble, I closed my eyes and this was kind of a, a chance mark. And now it's turned into this really interesting design, right? And I bet some of you are probably finding things in your drawing that maybe you're saying, oh, it looks like a cat or, oh, it looks like a heart or I see um, a weird alien face, right? So you might begin to identify with it too because you have symmetry, symmetry in your own bodies. If, if you like it just like this and you just wanna color it in, I'll show you, this is one I made uh, this morning actually. And I did the same exact thing that started as a scribble and I just used um, colored pencils and I colored in all the shapes. So the trick is, you know, you're gonna have You've got to, if you color this shape red, you want to color it red, red, red. So you've got to find all four shapes um, if you want it to really have symmetry. Um, if you are not feeling that you want to make a scribble mark, maybe that's too much chaos for you and you want to control it more. Um, another thing that I like to do sometimes is find found marks. So this one, instead of starting with a scribble, I'm really interested in erosion lines right now and like how the landscape is altered by natural forces. So this drawing, I actually traced it from a book about erosion um, and it was a book of aerial photos. So these were lines that were on rock formations. And so that was my starting point instead of a scribble. But I did the same process, folded, scratched it, folded, scratched it. Um, and then I was really interested in how it turned out that I wanted to paint it with watercolor paper. So if you don't want to leave yours on copy paper, if you want to do something a little more fancy with it, um, you could transfer it onto watercolor paper. So I'll show you how you could do that. That's what I did with this one. I transferred it onto watercolor paper. I'm not really sure it's finished, um, but I had fun painting it in. So. If you want to transfer this on the watercolor paper, it's really easy. You just turn your drawing over on the back and you're gonna scribble scrabble all over the back of your whole paper. You're gonna color it all in. Um, and again, if you have a 6B pencil, that makes your life a little easier because the graphite is gonna smudge over really nicely. After you have colored the whole thing and it's really nice and dark, then you just get a piece of watercolor paper. And you're gonna take your drawing and you just wanna tape it down onto your watercolor paper in a couple of places, just so it doesn't wiggle. So 
So I just usually tape it at the top so that it can kind of open like a hinge, like a door on a hinge, right? Um, so now I can, I'll show you, you can open this and put it back down and check it. Um, when you trace over with a regular pencil, it's so cool because the lines are gonna press right over onto your watercolor paper. So watch this. What? How cool is that? Those lines just transferred right over. Um, so yeah, so you could just repeat this process. I'm not gonna make you sit there and watch me trace all of these lines because that would take a long time. And I know you wanna work on your own art project. Um, but if you transfer all these lines over, then you can either trace them with a Sharpie or you could color them with colored pencil or you could use watercolor like I did. So just trace all the lines. And then when you're done, you'll have your image transferred onto nice watercolor paper and you can paint your design in. So I would love to see what you guys do with this symmetrical project. Um, if you would like to share them with me, you can. I'll just tell you my website is www.annadeanart.com. And I would love for you to contact me through there so that I can see your creations. Okay, so I'm really excited to see what you guys make. I can't wait to see all of your scribbles. I hope you have so much fun um, with this project and I hope that you'll share your results with me. Um, and again, my website is www.annadeanart.com. Thank you.